got any fries, man? I just need a couple. No. Ha ha! In today's story, Marge and Homer's routine takes a turn when a simple trip to the movies reveals tensions in their relationship. After an accident leaves Homer unable to work, he embarks on a journey to become a more attentive and caring husband. At the beginning of the episode, we see several action scenes happening. During these scenes, Homer is yelling about what he calls the scene until Marge shows up telling him to stop making those comments. This doesn't change anything and he keeps going. At one point during these comments, Carl and Lenny appear and start saying that Homer's comments were really good, and that they themselves couldn't have imagined making comments as good as those. But this praise from Homer's friends only makes Marge even angrier. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have thought of that in 10,000 lifetimes. On the way back, Homer continues making comments. However, when he looks at Marge, he notices that she's quiet and decides to ask why. Marge responds that she was angry because he commented throughout the whole movie. With this, he realizes that she is really mad. When Marge asks him to just take her home, Homer still tries to make some comment, but it doesn't change her mood, and he just keeps driving with a sad expression. That's what she said! The next day at school, there is a new rule that requires the confiscation of electronic devices to prevent children from accessing embarrassing videos. So each of the children has to go through an x-ray. Chalmers starts lamenting, saying that with this situation, he is at rock bottom. And when it's Bart's turn to go through the x-ray, he makes a joke to the janitor, Willie. As soon as he goes to get his coins back, Nelson appears and takes them for himself, sparing Bart from putting them back in his pocket. Right after, Bart tells Milhouse that he hates Nelson, and Milhouse says that his mother told him that bullies only do these kinds of things because, deep down, they are scared. When Nelson hears this, he threatens that Milhouse's mother will be his next victim, and soon fulfills his threat. You make dumb kids, lady! Mm hmm? Hmm. Homer is at work when Lenny and Carl arrive and make comments about how pretty Marge looked the night before. Homer agrees, but his expression is sad. His friends ask if he is having trouble in paradise, and Homer explains that it's just in the marriage. As soon as the two leave, he calls Marge and leaves a message saying that he feels bad because she is mad at him and that he can't wait to get home and run into her arms. At that moment, Mr. Burns appears driving a vehicle at work. However, he is still learning to drive the vehicle with Smithers' help. He ends up crashing into the ladder where Homer is who falls from it and breaks some light bulbs on top of himself. <laughs> Now in the hospital, as soon as Homer opens his eyes, Mr. Burns is happy that he is alive and asks Smithers to give Homer some medicine and send him back to work. However, Smithers explains that Homer suffered a concussion and needs a few days to recover. Burns insists on sending him back to work, but his assistant explains that it would be best to give Homer a few days to recover, otherwise he could sue Mr. Burns for a fortune. With this, he decides to give Homer eight weeks of paid vacation, but Homer is frightened by the malicious way Burns pronounces the news. Homer comes home excited to share the news, but Marge isn't happy, nor are Bart or Lisa, who is tuning her saxophone. Grandpa isn't happy either, and even Homer's own reflection looks sad. Soon, Homer looks around and seeing everyone in his family looking sad, he gives up on sharing the news and makes up something else. This makes Marge even more irritated, feeling like a single mother. Some go back to what they were doing, then others start complaining about what happened to them. In the end, Homer celebrates his eight weeks of paid vacation without anyone in the family knowing. The next day, Homer is leaving the house and says goodbye to Marge, saying he's going to work. But before going out the door, he tells Marge that the two of them could visit the romantic places they used to go when they were dating. However, Marge says she needs to take Maggie to the pediatrician. Homer responds that it's okay and pretends to leave sadly for work. As soon as he closes the door, he starts throwing his tie and shoes away. But after feeling cold, he goes back to retrieve them. At school, Miss Edna starts saying that she didn't sleep well during the night and was thinking about the bad choices she made in life. With this, Nelson starts mocking her and Edna quickly decides to send him to the principal's office, while the rest of the class will watch a movie. This news makes all the kids in the class celebrate. <laughs> You can't change the past! The movie shown to the kids is actually a documentary where a man criticizes people who eat crusty burgers. The presenter says he will challenge himself to eat those junk burgers for a while. Krusty appears complaining about yet another documentary trying to defame him. The presenter begins his journey of eating only crusty burgers for 30 days. At a certain point, he says he gained 9 kilos and his tests already showed significant changes. Bart watches the documentary very interested. When the man reaches the last day of the challenge, he has become so obese that he can barely move. Krusty arrives with a bulldozer and removes him from the place. But the man explains that it will all have been worth it if it makes Krusty realize the importance of proper nutrition. With this, Bart starts taking some notes and we discover that the documentary gave him the idea to create a plan against the bully Nelson. Hmm. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, Homer is walking around the city and comments on how you can see so many beautiful things when you're not at work. While admiring the things happening around him, he looks at his watch and sees that it's already noon. So he decides to go to Mo's tavern and let people think he has a drinking problem. As soon as he arrives at the bar, Mo hands him a beer. And after a brief comment, Homer says it's okay to get drunk all day since his wife doesn't want to be with him. Mo starts to say he'd like to discuss Homer's problems, but he has to deal with a raccoon invasion in the back room. So Homer stays alone at the bar and watches TV, seeing a scene where a man emerges from the sea and quickly changes his appearance just by unzipping a suit. Homer starts thinking he'd like to have him around, and to his surprise, the man named Stradivarius Kane appears in front of Homer, but it was just an imagination due to the concussion Homer had suffered at the plant. Dr. Kane explains that he's on one of his toughest missions, which is to turn Homer into an attractive man for his wife. If you want. Come on, really? Show a little class. Sorry. Soon, Lenny enters the bar and Kane hides because Lenny's imaginary friend could see him, and that's exactly what happens. At school, Nelson walks by each kid, taking their lunch money. But when he gets to Lisa, she just greets him and says he won't take her money because she's a girl, and after all, it's the girls who always end up with the money anyway. She thanks him even though she finds it a bit sexist. Then Nelson says he's going to see Bart, and Lisa takes the opportunity to ask Nelson a favor, which was to find out where her dolls are. Nelson agrees to help. As soon as he reaches Bart asking for his lunch money, Bart starts saying that instead of money, he'll give Nelson lunch and hands him a bag of Krusty Burgers. This makes Nelson happy, and then Bart gives him several burger coupons that will last for a month. Um, no, you give them the coupon and they give you the hamburger. I knew that. <laughs> Homer is with his imaginary friend, and while Kane observes all the details of the car, he starts making comments. Seeing all the trash in the car, he says that Homer will clean it, put on some cologne, and become a charmer. But Homer isn't excited and comments that Kane sounded like his second wife saying those things. At home, Lisa and Bart watch a report about childhood obesity and how all the foods created for kids have turned into diabetes and fat. When showing some kids, Lisa sees that one of them is Nelson, but Bart says it's just her imagination. However, as they keep watching the report, she discovers it really was him, and Bart goes silent. Homer is with Kane at a fancy restaurant, and Dr. Kane says that Homer needs to win over a strange woman and make her love him forever, even though he's married, because he needs this to become the man Marge desires. He hints that Homer can say anything as long as it's with confidence. Homer starts putting the plan into action, talking to various women, but all his words and phrases are nonsensical and clueless, resulting in everyone rejecting him. You know what would makes the best ventriloquist dummy? Maple. His imaginary friend gives a tip on how he could talk to a woman, and as soon as Homer tries, the woman likes what she hears and hugs Homer, saying she loves a chubby guy who can talk well. However, when the woman's husband arrives and points a gun at Homer, his friend suggests throwing lemon in the guy's eyes. Homer does this, and on the second try, it works, and they both run out of the place, laughing at the situation. At the plant, Marge goes to Homer's workplace to bring him some cookies, since he was working so much. However, before entering, she meets Lenny, and when he asks what she is doing there, Marge explains that she came to visit Homer, who was working so hard. Lenny then explains that Homer hasn't been working at the plant since he took his vacation and is already in his sixth week. Marge comments that this is why she found it strange that he was leaving on time and quickly gets angry, throwing all the cookies on the ground. Irritated, Marge leaves in her car. Shortly after, Carl arrives wanting to know what happened, and Lenny says that apparently he had an important conversation with Marge without realizing it. In the next scene, we see Krusty having fun with his monkey until Lisa arrives with Nelson and blames Krusty for Nelson's condition. While Nelson asks for more fries, Krusty says it's not his fault since there are salads and yogurt on the menu. After a few minutes of conversation, Krusty confesses that it was a lie. To help with the situation, he says he will solve it by having Nelson train with his personal trainer, and they talk to figure out to what extent they will transform Nelson. At the end of the day, Homer arrives home all excited, but as soon as he opens the door, he sees Marge sitting in a chair and she starts questioning him about how his workday was. Homer is confused, but after getting advice from his imaginary friend to tell her the truth, he does and explains that during his vacation, he was preparing to be a better husband for her. He starts doing everything his friend says, and as soon as he tells the truth to Marge, she worries about the fact that he hit his head. After another piece of advice, he kisses her. Kiss her. Kiss her while I watch. <gasps> Later, the two are in the car going to the most romantic restaurant in town. Marge is impressed that the car is clean, and Homer makes it clear that he cleaned it for his lady. At the restaurant, Homer is having a romantic dance with Marge when suddenly, the husband of the woman he had previously charmed appears and points a gun at Homer, leaving him with no way to react. Then, Marge moves behind Homer, and while the gun is pointed at him, the wife of that guy appears and knocks him out. She tells Homer that he needs to run away quickly and calls him love. While Homer runs away with Marge, she questions why that woman called him love. Homer explains on the way that he trained to be a better husband, 
He says that the only one who can solve that situation is his imaginary friend Stradivarius Kane and starts hitting his head with a rock to make him appear again. After a few attempts, his imaginary friend appears and says that Homer knows what to do because he already taught him. Homer comes out of his hiding place and starts talking to the man in the same way he talked to the woman. The man ends up succumbing to Homer's charm and puts the gun away. Then he invites Homer and Marge to mingle with his friends, but his wife doesn't like him talking about people who aren't his real friends and the two leave arguing. After that, Homer comments that he and Marge used to be like the couple that was fighting, but now they are different, and they decide to end the night by the sea under the moonlight. Any of the episode at school, all the nerds celebrate a bully-free school, but the happiness is short-lived as Nelson appears all transformed into a muscular kid and starts beating up all the nerds. While watching from a distance, Lisa comments to Bart that even though it's not a happy ending and Nelson is still tough on the nerds, he's still kind of cute. Well, he's tough on nerds, but easy on the eyes. What'd you just say? Nothing. Thanks for watching. See you in the next videos.